and I up here wish to <coughs> greet each and every one of you in the name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, this morning. Okay. We have come to witness a baptism and also a confirmation to the young ones that have come in our midst in the last year or so. We joy in that and we uh, praise the Lord for that. Before we move on, I have one announcement I've been asked to make. Uh, in your bulletins that you've been handed out, you'll notice that there's a prayer service on Wednesday night. That is not true. There is a conference begins Wednesday night at the, uh, the conference center. We're going to have a music program next time. So no prayer service. We meet at the conference center for the beginning of the conference that evening. Also, I would like to uh, introduce Brother Chad this morning. We all know him. And uh, he was uh, scheduled to be a guest speaker at center. And this baptism came up. And so uh, we asked, he was asked if he can do the charge. And, and he's agreed to do that. And so he's still a guest minister meeting today. <laughs> he attends first. So I wanted to introduce him, thank him for being here, and the other brothers that are up front with us this morning. And for our call to worship, I have chosen from Moroni, chapter 8, verse 29. And the first fruits of repentance is baptism, and baptism cometh by faith unto the fulfilling of the commandments. And the fulfilling of commandments bringeth remission of sins. And the remission of sins bringeth meekness. And lowliness of heart cometh the visitation of the Holy Ghost, which comforter filleth with hope and perfect love, which love endureth by diligence unto prayer, until the end shall come when all the saints shall dwell. Let us continue with the singing of the hymn to the end.
Satan in the hour of service. Uh, we ask that you would be with Sophia and Esteban as they enter the water of baptism and that you witness your old nation. We ask that you bless us with your spirit, that you go with us this hour and continue to, to provide comfort and peace for those. We ask that you would chat during the, during the charge in the old nation. He says, we ask that your son holy name. Amen.
What a joy it is to be with you this morning. What a happy, happy day that it is to be alive and to be able to come together as a congregation, as a people who have that love for God, who weren't perfect, but who has a love for God and who are striving, who are striving to be a perfect people for God. But we can't do it except God is with us. And Esteban and Sophia, I want you to know how excited I am and my family. And all these people here are to be here with you. And for that exciting decision that you made to follow Jesus, just like the song said. It's one of the most important decisions you'll ever make in your life. You probably didn't know that you could make such an important decision if you're ready to make But you did. And I want you to know why I had the opportunity to share with some other young ones your age just a few months ago. I want you to know also that today, heaven's smiling. It's rejoicing. Man. Angels are singing today in heaven because of you. Both of them. Because you're so special. And because... You're showing God today that you love Him. And you know, He told us that He wants us to choose Him as our Father. And today you're showing Him that you do choose Him. Because you're going to go into these waters here in a few moments. And you're going to make a very special promise. A very special covenant with Him. And in that covenant, something very awesome happens. You get to be part of God's family. And that's not just for a little while. A part of God's family, which is forever. So as long as you continue to trust and follow after your son Jesus. It's a wonderful, marvelous thing that He offers us. And so we're so happy to be able to experience that with you today. I want to talk to these two today. Obviously what I share is for all of us, but this is your day. I want to make sure that they understand what's going on and they remind them of, of what's going to happen. Why we do it. Did you know that Jesus was baptized? Did you guys know that? I you he sure did. You know, Jesus had a friend, his name was John. And they called him John the Baptist. They called him John the Baptist because John taught about Jesus and God. And as those trusted and believed on Jesus' name, just like you are doing today, John took those people and he baptized them in the water. He took them down to a river called Jordan. And he baptized a whole lot of people in his time. You know, Jesus came to John. <laughs> Jesus came to John. And he told John, he said, John, I need to be baptized today. But you know what John did? John knew who Jesus was. He knew that Jesus was the Son of God. He was the, the Messiah. He was the one come to save him from his sins. And you remember what sin is. Sin is all those things that we say and that we do that are the opposite of what Jesus teaches us to do. And so he refused Jesus, but Jesus told John that it had to be done. Because that was the law. That he had to fulfill all the righteousness. He had to be obedient to God too. Because he was a man. And every man has to come the same way. And baptism is that way. And so John baptized Jesus. I want to read to you about that experience that happened. And then come Jesus unto Galilee, to Jordan, unto John to be baptized of him. But John refused him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee. And why come that one to me? And Jesus answered and said unto him, Suffer me to be baptized of thee, for it becomes us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he suffered him 
And John went down into the water and baptized him. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water. And listen to what John saw. John saw and lo, the whole heavens were open unto him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending descending upon God, upon him like a dove, and lighting upon Jesus. And lo, he heard a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, and whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. John got to see the heaven open. And he's got to see this very special spirit raised upon Jesus. And he heard God's voice. I want to talk to you a little bit about that spirit as well as that baptism in the water. We wonder what water has to do with baptism. And you know what? There was a conversation that Jesus had with another man. And this man's name was Nicodemus. Nicodemus was a teacher at the time, and he lived at the same time Jesus did. But you know, there were things that even Nicodemus as a teacher didn't fully understand about God, and Jesus had a teaching. And so Nicodemus, he had heard about Jesus. He had witnessed even a lot of the miracles that Jesus had performed when He healed the sick. And when He made a blind man see and the lame to walk, He even cast out an evil spirit over man. And you know what He even did? He raised His friend Lazarus from the dead and came back to life. And He knew these things. And so He heard also Jesus talking about this kingdom of God. And He wanted to know more about it. And so He went and visited Jesus by night. And He asked Him about it. And this is what Jesus told Nicodemus. He told Nicodemus, he said, Nicodemus, no one can even see the kingdom of God except they be born again of the water and the spirit. Kind of a weird statement. You know, Nicodemus, he started thinking about what Jesus said. I bet uh, the only thing he could think of was that natural birth whenever he was born of his mother. And so he asked Jesus a simple, logical question, didn't he? He said, Jesus, how is an old man like me be born again? You mean I'm supposed to be born of my mother a second time? And I bet Jesus probably smiled at him and said, no, they do not just not me. He said, this is a, a baptism of the water and of the Spirit that you might enter into the kingdom of God. It's a similar duty. And that baptism is kind of like that. You know, when we're born, we're born into a family, huh? And we take that name to that family. And just like God's family, we're born into His. And we do it through this ordinance that He gave us through baptism. And you know whose name we take the promise? Jesus' name. Yeah. Because it's His family that we become a part of. We become a part of that family of God. And we get to be forever the sons and those daughters that He's called us to be. When I think about uh, what Jesus said when He says that we're to be born again, I thought about that. And for me, it's kind of like having a second birthday, really, isn't it? You know? And at those birthday parties, you celebrate and you, you get to have all kinds of fun. I know Sophia just had a birthday because he invited my daughter Stella over there and she told me how much fun he was having. And so this is kind of like that birthday. Except Jesus is talking about a birthday into his family. And so we get to celebrate again in a very special way. There was another man, and his name was Paul. And he was also later became a friend of Jesus. He didn't always know Jesus, but one day Jesus came to him. And from then on, Paul was right by his side. And he became a, a servant for Jesus. And he talked about Jesus often to many people. He was back, he would travel to many places to talk about Jesus. You know, there was one particular people that he went to. It was in a place called Ephesus. And he talked about this Jesus Christ. And he talked about a little bit about what it means to be a part of that family. And how we become his sons 
and his daughters. And I hope you know that, that you are his sons and his daughters when you make that covenant. This is what he said. He wrote a letter because he couldn't always be there in person. So he wrote a special letter to these people. Let me read to you just a little bit what Paul said. He said, Grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ, according as He hath chosen us in Him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before Him in love. Now listen to this. Having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to Himself, According to the good pleasure of his will. Paul says that we become a part of his family by being adopted into it. Because God has one only begotten Son, and that's Jesus. But when we choose God as our Father and we choose to be baptized and to be born again, we become those adopted children of God. And so all of us are adopted children of the Most High. And that's what Jesus was telling us. You know, he also spoke to another group in the book of Romans. And he said something real similar to them in prayer. And he said, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons and the daughters of God. For ye have not received the Spirit of bondage and being to fear, but ye have received the Spirit of adoption, whereby we cry and have a Father. The Spirit itself bear witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And the children then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. You know what an heir is? It's somebody that is entitled to, a, whether it's a piece of property or it's a special title. It's something you don't purchase. It's something you don't have to buy. It's something that's given to you. Something that you can inherit whenever somebody goes away. Or when you reach a certain age. It becomes yours. And... What do you think that we can hear from God in Christ? We get to inherit a place with Him. We get to inherit that gift of salvation, that place in His holy kingdom that the demons would want to know about. That kingdom of God. And you know that spirit that uh, Paul was talking about? He also said that it was a, a holy spirit of promise that all those that trusted and believed in Him would be sealed by it. And it's called the Spirit of Promise because there's a promise with it. And the promise is that if we continue to trust and follow after Jesus, and we stay true to our promise to Him, and we continue to be those sons and those daughters that we are to Him, and one day He's going to come bring us home, and we get to live with Him, and our Father God in that beautiful place. And you know something else about. That kingdom of God, His home, that's one day going to be our home, is that He says there's not going to be any death, there's not going to be any sorrow, there's not going to be any need for the, for the crime, because there's not going to be any hurt. All that's going to flee away. And He says only that never ending happiness and joy will be in your hearts. And you'll never be alone, and you'll never have to worry about anything because He's going to be there for you all the time. And you get to walk beside him and deal with the angels. And one other fun fact about the kingdom that I always thought was really exciting is that he talked about the animals. And those animals, like the lion and the lamb, you wouldn't think that those two would hang out very much with them. You know what that lion and lamb are going to do? They're going to play together. They're going to lay down together. And I've always thought how cool it would be one day to be able to wrestle around with old lion, old bear, and not have to be worried about him ever hurting me. Or looking at me like a piece of lunch meat. <laughs> but that's what God promises. That there'll be a place just like that. And all we've got to do is trust and follow Him. And that spirit that we talk about, that He seals us with, that Spirit, He also calls the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God, and a Holy Comfort. Because anytime you say it, He says it will come. 
Anytime you need to be brave, it'll make you brave. It'll give you courage when you need it. Anytime you feel lonely, He says if you're praying and you ask me, that Spirit, I'll send to you. And I'll make sure you don't feel lonely anymore. And if you ever have any kind of need, that special Spirit is going to be with you. Because that's a gift, just like a birthday. You get a gift, don't you? But God gives you one of the greatest gifts there ever could be, and that's the gift of the Holy Spirit. And that gift is with you all the days of your life. And God says it connects us to Him. And as long as you continue to rely on that gift, and it's a friend, that Holy Spirit is also your best friend. And it can do all those things for you, and it leads you right back, right back to God. And that's where we all want to be. And that's where He's waiting for us to come home. i got one more little thing I want to share with you. Did you know that God is a record keeper also? Did you know that He's making a record of everything that we say, everything that we do? He is. I see He's taking the head over He is. And he's got a special book that he keeps. And you know what it's called? It's called the Lamb's Book of Life. And it's called the Lamb's Book of Life because Jesus is referred to as the Lamb. And he's the Lamb because uh, he gave himself as a sacrifice so long ago. Just like they used to give sacrifices to their old man. But he was the altar of the And so in that Lamb's Book of Life is a record of all those who love him. Of all of his family, all of his sons and his daughters, and one day he's going to come and he's going to gather together. Have you ever been to a, a reunion? Do you know what a reunion is? When everybody gathers together and they visit and, and uh, fellowship and all these things, and all the times they have to do. Jesus said there's going to be a grand reunion one day, and he's going to come with his angels and that church that's waiting. And you, Esteban, and Sophia, you've got to be a part of it. And you've got to get to visit all those that have gone before us and be with those that love it and all the things of Christ and we've done. And so, your name is written in that special grand book of life. And that's important because if it's not written in that book, we don't get to be with Jesus. It would be a sad day for anyone. Don't get to be a part of that. But that's fun. And Sophia, we love you very much. And I tell you, who loves you even more than anybody in this room? And that's Jesus. And that's who you're following today. And because you love Him so much, and because you're willing to make that covenant today, all these promises that He's talked about, and many more if you go back, Many more promises and many more things that He's waiting to give you. Oh, what is there to see you? And now, so He's so happy and so we're so excited also. We love Him. And we're just so, uh, just can't wait to see you go in that water today. And that gift of the Holy Ghost, when it's given to you, you know, Jesus said that uh, in that record that it came upon Him like a dove, you know, like a, like a bird. Maybe to sit upon it. And I've always thought, you know, if you ever got a shadow of a puzzle, and you put your hands in there just like this, you try to lock. Put the shadow on the wall. It kind of looks like a part of the puzzle. And I really believe that that was God's hands laid upon his son. And he received that again. And later on, that's exactly how that gives the Holy Spirit to be given to you. Those hands be laid on your hands. And that Spirit of God will come into you. And a part of that resides in the now. And a greater part of you is to So we love you and we look forward to it. Good to see you come apart in God's family, His Son and His God. In preparation for the baptism, we're going to sing him too. 44, and uh, during the singing of this hymn, I will 
last for candidates and those participating in the uh, head of the baptismal song. And we will remain seated in the
but apart from us, to remember our God and what we owe Him and what He's done for us. And we give as He's commanded us to do. And I just want to, to say to those, especially in the center, you have your envelopes, you go ahead and put them in. Uh, they will be separated and they will go to our congregation. So that has to be taken care of. So you don't have to worry about that. And uh, brother, please come forward. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we come before you. We thank you for this opportunity that we have to sit back and be here, Lord. I pray that you will take this and use it according to your needs and according to your will, dear Father. And we pray for those whose responsibility it is to see to the use of these things, that your spirit will be with them, that you will guide them, and that you will direct them. That, dear Father, all things might be done in order of your will and in order as you have commanded them to do. So at this time, Father, we come before thee and we ask these things in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ.
hopefully that won't go away. Um, unfortunately, I think we all know some adults who that quite haven't disappeared. But um, we still have to be patient. But we have to remember that, you know, the Lord loves us and all of our flaws, and we must love them and all their flaws. I do not know Esteban and Sophia very well. Um, I know uh, from what uh, Teresa has talked about, they love questions. They will ask you pretty much every single question they can think of in a matter of 30 seconds. Um, as someone who doesn't really um, care too much about how things work. Uh, I'm not really a question person. I just go with it and move along. But as I believe it was last Sunday as I was watching uh, Sophia asking Teresa question after question and Teresa being quick with giving her an answer. I realized maybe maybe at that age I should have been a little bit more uh, questioning. Not to say that Teresa's answers were correct, but um, I'm sure if you ask her or Kevin, they work. <laughs> but see, that patience, that love, that meekness, is not only a reminder of what how we should act towards them, but how we should act towards others. I know, uh, as someone who is a leader of fish, uh, I'm sure Chase in the back is probably rolling his eyes whenever I talk about patience. Um, because sometimes I think I lack that with him. But uh, maybe he should be more behaved. <laughs> <laughs> but as the kids grow into who they are, we also should grow into who we are. I'm going to read out Titus, and I'm not sure if I filled uh, a whole lot of time, but if you haven't read Titus in a while, I recommend it. It's only three chapters, quite short. I'm going to start from chapter 3, verse 2. To speak evil of no man, and to be no brawlers, but gentle, showing all meanness unto men. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving divers' lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. But after that, the kindness and the love of God our Savior towards man appeared, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost, which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior. That being justified by his grace, grace we should be made heirs, heirs according to the hope of eternal life. Now I
two short scriptures I'd like to read before we move into our confirmations. <clears throat> the first one is from section 32 of the Doctrine of Covenants. I'm going to read 2G through 3A. Yea, repent and be baptized, every one of you, for the remission of your sins. Yea, be baptized even by water. And then cometh the baptism of fire and the Holy Ghost. Behold, very, very, I say unto you, this is my gospel. And the other one is from section 85 of the Doctrine and Covenants, or read 1C through 2A. Wherefore I now send upon you another comforter, even upon you, my friends, that it may abide in your hearts, even the Holy Spirit of promise, which other comforter is the same, that I promised unto my disciples, as it is recorded in the testimony of John. This comforter is the promise which I give unto you of eternal life, even the glory of the celestial kingdom, which glory is that of the church of the firstborn, even of God, the holiest of all, through Jesus Christ, his Son. At this time, Esteban, I'm going to ask you to take this chair in there to me, and Sophia, if you will take the other chair. And I also ask Kevin and uh, Eddie to take their places also. <clears throat> Sophia, Tamita, Dulce Alvarena will be confirmed by Elder Kevin Fogg and assisted by High Priest Edwin Gates. Sophia, Timothy, Dulce, Alarena. Having accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, and having immersed yourselves in the water of water and baptism, you called upon the Brother Eddie and I to minister over the baptism of fire, in which you will receive the Spirit of God. It is not through the power of Brother Eddie or myself or any of us that this gift is given. But because of the great love that your Heavenly Father has for you, because of his immeasurable mercy and grace, that he allows this gift to be given to you. The Holy Spirit will reside within you and it will show you the things that are good in the life of others, in the actions of others, and in your life and in your actions. It will comfort you when you are sad. It will strengthen you when you are weak. You have an only that. As it witnesses to those things that you hear, to those things that you should do, it will also witness to those things that are not good, both in your life and in the life and actions of your life. Be that still small voice. This is a, a gift that cannot be valued in terms of the human understanding. This gift is a gift what that will ultimately lead you back to the presence of God. So we see now the Holy Spirit and be confirmed to them the remnant church of Jesus Christ in modern day saints. God's power is also God's power is a noble. But know this, God loves you. And God wants you to be happy. And God wants the best of you. We all bear witness that we are His, and through His power and His gospel. And we pray this in the name of the Son of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now then, 
Alvarena will be confirmed by High Priest Eddie Hicks and assisted by Elder Kevin Oh God, eternal Father. We ask thee in the name of thy Son, Jesus Christ, that hands placed upon thy child's head in this time, that we have come to confer upon him the gift of the Holy Spirit, that the Spirit of error, that you may know that he has received thy gift this day. We pray that you would enhance his talents and his excellencies and strengthen him in his weaknesses as he submits himself to thee and surrenders to your son Jesus Christ. Esteban, the Holy Spirit will guide you into all truth and even show you things to come. By this power, and the gift of eternal life is received. His spirit will bear record that you are his. That you may know that he resides within you now. And that because of this gift, the relationship between God and you can never, ever be taken away. Seek Him in all that you do. Listen for His guidance. For He knows your desires and He knows what you long for and He wants to give you those things.
Lord, the two new eyes who you know, began their walk with you. Lord, as they are beginning their walk, I pray, Lord, that it reminds us of the time when we began our walk and knowing how the challenges ahead of us, we didn't know those as these two do not know. And Lord, we pray, I pray that you would use us to help guide them. And Lord, I pray that the Spirit of your would be there and guide us all, protect us as we leave this sanctuary. And I thank you for these blessings. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.